How are y'all doing? Are y'all nervous being up here? Good deal. Good deal. You don't have to be nervous, especially around me. Can I slip right by you? Okay. All right. How you doing? Great to see you. What grade are you guys in? Third, Third and second. <laughs> Third and second, and what else? I'm sorry? Eight? Oh, gosh, six? Too good. All right. Well, today, special day. I a, brought a gold pen to sign this, okay? And I brought a pen to give to somebody. All right? Okay, but National School Breakfast Week, okay? We are proclaiming this week as the National School Breakfast Week. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Pretty neat? Yeah. What's your name? Layden. Lincoln? Layden. What? His name is Raiden. Raiden? Mm -hmm. Come here, Raiden. Come over here. How about that haircut you got going on? <laughs> you got any girlfriends that are right here? <laughs> you sure? You look like you look like a football player. You a football player? You and I could do some damage somewhere, you know that? <laughs> All right. Will you help me sign this when I sign it in a minute? You sure? Now, you won't mess it up, will you? Okay. <laughs> well, you stay right here a minute, okay? All right. I'm going to read a little more here. West Virginia, because I love this to death. I mean, this I just love. West Virginia is ranked first in the nation for breakfast, breakfast participation in their schools. Now, you don't want to be first on everything coming or going. But when you think of all the kids in need and all the kids we're taking care of, that's one side that we wish to goodness we didn't have to take care of any kid because then all kids would be doing good and everything. But it's not that way. You got a lot of kids that need our support in every way. But the thing that is good about it is just this, is our service personnel whether it be our cooks or on and on and on, the job they're doing to be taking care of a need that's first in the nation is really good. Really, really, really good. So you guys got to clap for them, for all those great service personnel people that are really doing a great job every day. So, I had here that Ann Erling was going to read this proclamation, but I understand now that Dr. Payne is going to read it. And Ann, we didn't mean to just throw you under the bus, but we did. <laughs> and, and so Dr. Payne's going to take over, and then we're going to invite Sharon Maynard to receive the proclamation and take some really beautiful pictures. And, and Sharon is a registered dietitian that I need to talk to for sure. And, <laughs> And uh, she's going to come up and we're going to get this all done, okay? So, here's the thing we're going to do first. That's Ray, Raiden. How'd you come up with a name like Raiden? <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> all right, now Raiden. I'm going to have you just hold this just for a second right here with me, okay? And then I'm going to, we are going to sign it. And then Dr. Payne, you're going to take it over to Dr. Payne. He's going to read it, okay? Unless you want to read it all. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't already see it. I can put these on and maybe see it. But let's sign it, okay? All right, let's do it right now. And this is a proclamation by me declaring that this week is our National School Breakfast Week. So, all right. Now, you're going to help me, okay? Can you make a J? Well, come on, do it. And do it good. And now do an I. And now do an M. Okay. 
Okay, we're cooking here. Now another J. Oh man, you are talented. Okay, now to U. Now an S. Now a T. Now an I. Now a C. And an E. Now let's cross. You cross the T. Cross the T. And dot the I. Over there. Over there. Got two of them. One on each side. No, whoa, whoa, right, right there. And one over here. Now you dotted the M. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, man. You're doing good. Okay? All right, now. Can you take that to Dr. Payne? Y'all clap for right now. You did a great job. A proclamation by Governor Jim Justice. Whereas the school breakfast program has served our nation admirably since it was permanently established in 1975, and whereas the school breakfast program is dedicated to the health and well-being of our nation's children, and whereas the school breakfast program joins the Fuel Up to Play 60 and has been joined through the years by many other excellent child nutrition programs, and whereas there is evidence of continued need for nutrition education and awareness of the value of school nutrition programs, and whereas an average of three million school breakfasts are served monthly to students at more than 700 sites in West Virginia, West Virginia is ranked first in the nation for breakfast participation according to Food Research and Action Center scorecard. And whereas the West Virginia Feed to Achieve Act emphasizes all West Virginia students shall have adequate time and availability for school breakfast. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Jim Justice, Governor of the great state of West Virginia, do hereby proclaim March 4th through 8th, 2019 as National School Breakfast Week in the Mountain State and encourage all citizens to become aware and concerned about their children's and their own nutrition habits in hope of achieving a more healthful citizenry for today and the future. In, in witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the state of West Virginia to be affixed, done at the Capitol, City of Charleston, State of West Virginia, this sixth day of February, in the year of our Lord. I'm sorry, that should be the first. Well, what's the date today? Fourth day of March, excuse me, in the year of our Lord, 2019, and in 156th year of the state by Governor Jim Justice. Let's give the governor and all of you a nice round of applause. Thank all of you. Thank all of you. I get to come up here and take a picture with y'all. <laughs> come over here. That, that's, that's even better. Morgan and Avery, you'll come forward. Yeah. You've got to come over here behind the desk. Okay, don't let me knock you down here now. we got to wait on Dr. Payne here just a second. Okay. Let's open that up, too. Got it. There you go. He always has to put the wide angle lens to get me in the picture. Can we invite a couple people to join the Come on. Pictures? That's great. Come on up real quick. We'll do a group picture. Let me get the kids to come up here. Yeah, stand in front. Anybody that would like to be here? You can get them to just drop right down if you want to. Get a couple of the others. Go ahead and sit. Go ahead and sit. Oh, the other side. Yes. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Make sure I see you both eyes. Mm -hmm. All right. We got it. <laughs> Ready? Set. Put the put the spoon down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
And okay. then have, we have students that want to bring over a poster to have you sign. Fantastic. I'm going to sit down now and sign this. Okay. Oh. Do you want to just sign right here? I signed it with my, all my name. I said, all my very best, with much pride I sign, Governor James C. Justice II. Thank y'all so much. Y'all are doing great stuff. I am really proud of you. That's for sure. I'm gonna come and eat with you one day, okay? <laughs> I mean, that's all there is to it. You better tell us cooks, we gotta have something good that day. <laughs> and they have stuff great every day, okay? So, proud of all y'all. Very so, good. So Very I would good. like to take just one moment to uh, bring one of our students, Morgan, up. And she's going to say a few words. But before she does, I really want to thank our nutrition directors that came. Uh, um, some of our people that work with child nutrition in the schools to help make it a healthier place. Our Office of Child Nutrition uh, that came to be here and parents and honored guests and especially our children from Alum Creek Elementary, uh, Avery Powell from Hurricane Middle School, Hurricane if you're from where I live. and. Uh, and also Morgan, who's going to come say a few words. And Morgan is from Mann Middle School in Logan. So thank you all for being here. And I turn it over to Morgan to uh, complete this morning. Thank you. The opportunity to eat breakfast in school enables us to get the energy we need to focus in our classes and for us to stop acting out with bad behavior. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Y'all go have fun, okay? Are y'all having fun today? Bless you. Thank you, son. Well, I know you're really proud of your teachers and proud of all those that make good stuff happen, okay? We got to take care of one another. You know that? That's the biggest thing. So lots and lots of people we can take care of. Y'all just be buddies with everybody and love everybody, okay? I love that hair. You've got wild stuff going on in that hair. <laughs> you look pretty, though. Really pretty. All right. All right. You crazies, get out of here. Get gone. Get gone. Be good, though, okay? Bye-bye. See y'all. Okay, y'all forgive me for not getting out? We just have to. Uh, We've got one every single year. Oh, that's so good. That's good.
Can I? Uh, uh, hold on. Your head. Okay. Y'all make me look good. Now make me look good here. We'll try. Forward just a little bit. Yeah, come on. Stay. There you go. <laughs> All right, ready? Get set. Sharon, you weren't in it. Come on. 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 Come
or things that, you know, you know, opinions that become very discriminatory or it becomes actions that are completely disrespectful to the fact that we have a House of Representatives, you know, and so, so let's, let's just, I hope we can just pump the brakes and dial back and, and become the great West Virginians and, and talk about the story, the success story of what we're doing and, and hope that more people will come and more opportunity will present itself to our state and to our citizens. Uh, this is the revenue collections report basically that, that tells you know how we're doing. In February we came in 12.2 million above estimates and, and that's terrific news. Uh, Secretary Hardy here you know, has, uh, has said repeatedly to me to come in 11.3% or 11.7%, you know, uh, ahead of last year's February and it being a winter month is terrific news and it is. Uh, our severance tax, tax collections for the year are 40% above estimate or, or up, I'm sorry, rather 40% and, and our corporate net income collections are up 69 percent you know there's just uh our our personal income tax collections you know for february were 20.4 percent above estimate our sales and, and use tax collections were 9.2 percent above estimate it's just uh it's just like i said you know th this is this is incredible news. If you just think where we were when I walked in the door, what would we have given? What would we have given for this? And a lot of times, and rightfully so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, downplaying the story, rightfully so, the actions of ourselves becomes the national story rather than the actions of what we're really doing. And so, so from that standpoint, I think that's a shame. Our state's doing good, no question whatsoever. We're, we're knocking it out of the park. And, uh, but at the same time, we still got a lot of people to help and, uh, and we, we need to quit get, continuing to get in our own way. So uh, I'll open it up to questions and y'all can ask now. You guys are going to have to. Well, on the, the GDP numbers that come out, uh, especially the quarterly numbers, when they come out, they're very rough estimates. They will be revised over time. And uh, oftentimes you'll see uh, small states like West Virginia and Wyoming uh, go from one, one extreme to another extreme. Uh, the, the mining activity in, in, in the state is up. Um, maybe it hasn't been reported completely in, the, uh, in those estimates yet. I think one of the things that the estimates don't always capture significantly is the export side uh, on foreign good exports. I think it takes a while for that, that data to work its way into those estimates. So stay tuned for, for revisions that will come back in in future quarters and see how those numbers come in in future quarters. But certainly the, uh, the tax collections, the, the growth of the farm payroll uh, numbers would suggest that we do have some, some growth in West Virginia and, and, and the, uh, higher than what is suggested by the uh, by the release of that GDP data. Yes, sir. I don't want to get to a point, but I want to ask um, why we haven't heard from your Blue Ribbon Commission on Higher Education and as to the revenue and budget, about the $10 million that early on you promised to the regional institutions to bring them up to par with WVU and Marshall and Oscar passed. And then we heard it wasn't in your budget, but maybe it was in escrow. 
Where does all that stand? Dave, can y'all help me with, with that a little bit? I can, I can, I can take a stab at it and everything. I think, and and Bray, can you come up here? You may be able to help just a little bit. Did you hear the question, Bray? I did not. Okay. Well. Well, come up here and, and, and if you'd repeat the question and everything, because I, I want to, I always want to give you as great an answer as I can give you. Basically, I think the Blue Ribbon Commission, you know, in itself, is doing, doing their job. But I think what they, what they, what is happening within that job is it's, it's taking longer to, to produce the, the, I guess the, uh, the right solutions and everything than we anticipate. As far as the 10 million and dedicating the 10 million to bring the other institutions up and everything, I am absolutely a proponent of that in every way, shape, form, or fashion. But, but now, if you could ask your question one more time, because I, I want to make sure I'm not missing something. We understood that it was not included then in the budget that you delivered, but then perhaps we had been told uh, it was in escrow, uh, where, where that stands right now, because I understand the legislation right now with the bill is, has money proportionately in there, but right. you originally promised that, but then uh, when I understand it wasn't in your budget and put in escrow. The, the reason it is in the current budget was put in there, I believe, by the House. Uh, it was not in the original budget because at the time the Blue Ribbon Commission had not reached an agreement where all the four year schools were totally lined up with each other. They're still not, but they're closer to where they were. Yeah. That's, that's appreciate it. Yeah, no, I, that part of it I did not know. So that I'm glad I'm glad to clarify. When we're speaking of education, it looks like the uh, teacher pay raise bill seems to be stuck in uh, the Senate at the moment. Right. Any talks with the Senate leadership about what to do with teacher pay? <laughs> every day, every day. Uh, uh, but. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this today. I'm, I'm going to go to each the uh, each caucus. I'm going to go to the caucus of the of the the Senate and the House on the Republican side, as well as the House and uh, and, the, and the Senate on the Democrat side, and go into their caucuses. I want to do that, and I want to. I just want to talk to them. you know. There's there's. Uh, there's still a lot of really good that we can salvage out of this session. And, you know, and I've got an idea, you know, I, I, I want to really bring everyone to the table. You know, there's certain things within the, the I mean, if we're just going to talk about education, there's, there's certain things that there's no question that the Senate Republicans would like to have. You know, they've called it reform. I'd like to call it the betterment of our education systems and our schools, you know, it, uh, and our kid, for our kids and our, our teachers and everybody, you know, but, uh, but there are things that absolutely, you know, we can do to help make ourselves better, you know, and, 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 and so, and there's viewpoints that, that the union leaders or whoever may, whoever may be have. And what I want to do is try to bring everybody together, if it be a special session or whatever it may be, and to, to try to make some real progress in, in basically what the Senate, you know, has, uh, the Republican Senate has, has, has you know, hung their hat on for lack of a better word you know they they want to try to make some advances more than just a pay you know a pay raise bill i respect that i completely respect that and i really believe the unions embrace that as well so so i've got i've got to get that done and uh but at the same time i still think that there's a, a real possibility for some version of the pay raise bill to get across the finish line but, uh, but the net net of the whole thing is, you know, we've got that and other issues that are, are right in front of us right now. We've just got a matter of a few days, and, uh, and I want to go talk to everybody. I've been talking to them, but I've been talking to leadership only, and, and now what I want to do is I want to go talk to everybody. 
Hi, Brad. Where you been? I went and talked to Senator Blair about the budget. Okay, good. He's enjoying his talks with you in the morning. Well, he's going to get to talk to me this afternoon, too. <laughs> too. Uh, Governor, did anyone ask you about campus carry? They have, and uh, and I, you know, I, I sh I've got some real uh, opinions, and and I'd like to I'd like to just hold that until the bill gets to me, and uh, I have real concerns on both sides of the equation, you know, uh, I real do, I just do, you know, I. Uh, if we look at uh, and evaluate other states, you know, it seems like it's it's okay to do. You know, if we if we if we think about just the concept of it, and, and, and we listen to maybe the colleges, Marshall, may, you know, maybe it's it's something that is surely not wanted from their side. Uh, it's uh, You know, I'm a gun owner and very proud of it. I love to hunt. I love to target shoot. I am absolutely a believer wholeheartedly in, you know, in our Constitution and my right to bear arms. I think absolutely I am rock solid there a thousand percent. You know, uh, so I, I, I just haven't made a decision. If it gets to me. It's got to get to me first. Phil, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on your question about the GDP. Sure. We're two-thirds of the way through the fiscal year, 8 12 through, of course, into February. And what year to date, if you account for the fact that the governor raised the revenue estimate to $142 million right for the end of legislative session, add on the $53 million above the revised estimate that we're at today, we're $195 million above the estimate. Well, and you got $58 million that was unappropriated on top of that. Exactly. You know, so you really got $253. That's correct. $253 million. And the year-to-date numbers are just, they're just so good. I mean, they're all double, virtually all of them are double-digit. Consumer sales tax, 11.7% year-to-date. Severance tax, 40%. Personal income tax, 8.4%. Corporate net income tax, 69.3%. So two-thirds of the way in through the fiscal year, we're 12.4% above where we were on 2-28-18. So we've come a long way in the last 12 months. And I, we're two-thirds of the way through the fiscal year now, and I think it's trending to be a very good fiscal year. I saw that too, Phil. You know what you read, you know, and everything about the, the West Virginia's flat 0, 0.00, you know, growth rate and everything, and and uh, and we, I, I guess, adamantly uh, disagree with the the do we do we not adamantly disagree with with uh, you know that publication and their assessment. There's very little about economics. So it's hard to reconcile the two two numbers. Yeah. Flat. Yeah, yeah, that's. Those numbers do get revised, and, uh, and the provisions can be very significant when they come to get revised. And they have been in the past. What would be nice from my standpoint is at some point in time they revise them and we go from last to first, you know. <laughs> we done? Okay, thank y'all.